What if something is true? And how are they going to answer that? Or someone who is a Catholic. What if the Eucharist is true? What if absolution and confession is true? What are the consequences of that for you? Or for other people? What if it's true that in our country we could feed all the poor here? My name is uh, Father Richard O'Rourke. I'm a Catholic priest here in Harker Heights in Texas and a pastor of this parish. When the numbers got too much, we opened up this church, all right? And uh, I very much, I, I like the Koreans very much. And I think that they like me too. Uh, they had got a lovely experience to see when they were young in Korea. That was during the Korean War, remember? And they came across a lot of Irish priests and Irish nuns there who were very helped them a lot. And then they come over here, and for many years they never come across an Irish priest, and suddenly they meet this Irish priest, Father Richard. And they fall in love with him, and I fall in love with them. They're such a beautiful community, Korean community. And now the Korean community have been in, reinforced by all the rest of the community here. So we have about 1,100 families here at the present moment. Of course, there was the only thing of growing up in Ireland and I think having a different way. You, you'd be, you could be out in the streets at nine or ten at night if you wanted to be, you know, it was safe, you know, was that. And we used to enjoy, for some perceptible reason, I don't know, we used to enjoy the apples in other people's gardens rather than our own gardens. I mean, at home, we had apple trees, beautiful apple trees in our back garden, right? But, and so had my friends in their gardens and they had plums growing, we had plums growing. And you had a, but we used to go into other people's gardens, climb over the wall, and take their apples and their plums, you know. Why, I don't know. But it was a nice thing to do, you know. So we'd run away, you know, the usual thing. And then there'd be complaint. But anyway, we'd enjoy that. Then we, our parents would tell us never to do it again. We wouldn't do it for a full week, and then we'd do it again, of course, you know. That was part of it, I suppose. The desire to become a priest is there. And I received it first, I think, when I was about 16. I felt that desire, really very much in my life. And then when I was 18, I made a decision, yes, that this is what I believe God is calling me to. Just at that moment of ordination, when I went forward to the bishop, my heart was really beating. But it was beating with, not with anxiety, but with real joy. And it was really paining me, my heart was. It's almost impossible to explain it. My heart was actually paining me with joy, you know, with joy. So I went to Liverpool, and I was there in Liverpool for six years, extremely happy. It was in the, um, the poorer places in England I worked among, the slums in England. But they had, people had come out from slums, but they'd built new houses and so on. And so, but they were lovely people, the Liverpudlians. One has to understand, that's where the Beatles come from, so one has got to understand. They've got their own way of talking, their own way, their own humour, and very much tinged with the Irish one. But I loved them. I loved the people in Liverpool. They were so down to earth, really so honest and so open. And then my superiors decided to send me to England, uh, to London. And that was a totally different kind of a parish. That was a kind of middle class, educated, more educated parish. And so I spent four years there. And four happy years there too. It was a different kind of, it was a different atmosphere, but it was a lovely atmosphere as well. And, and in both places, I think, dedicated Catholics, they really loved their faith. And, and then time came and I was uh, sent to South Africa. And I was sent to South Africa in 1975, I think it was. That was right when the riots were just beginning. So I had 10 years of that, the riots, and involved in many ways in that because I was serving the people at the wrong side of the railway tracks, you know. But yet at the same time, there was, uh, there was a lot of divisions there, you know. So you had very good parishioners on every, the very wealthy and the very poor, you know. And the people lived, many people lived in Vandockies, you know, the cardboard huts, you know, they lived in. And it was their home, it was their home. They would invite me into their home, you know, and they, they would borrow perhaps a plate from somebody and put some food on the plate, you know, and that would be the food that they would have. But I would have to share that. That was their privilege of my sharing it, you know. The main thing is to have a heart for them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
probably very well, very well dismissed. Yeah, yeah wet, wet Irish day, <laughs> wet Irish day. Yeah. I get up at about a quarter past five in the morning, so, and then I pray first of all in the morning, and then I read my morning paper with my cup of coffee, I become human then. And then for the rest of the day then, you never know what's going to occur. I think being able to experience with people worship of God, being able to come together on a Sunday or during the week and to be able to offer Mass with the people, to be able to consecrate, be able to say those words, this is my body, this is my blood, within the context of the Mass, and know that Jesus Christ is really present, and that the people who are present at that Mass really believe that as well, really do, and that that is being believed all over the world. Also, I think that my life is also reconciling people to God, and that is absolving them in the name of God. And they know that when they hear those words, I absolve you from your sins, they know their sins are forgiven. They don't imagine it, they're not fooling themselves, they're not guessing it, they're not hoping it, they know it has taken place. And that relieves them of so much burdens in life. Yeah, no, I live here, my house is a comfortable house, thanks be to God, and uh, you know, uh, my, my ordinary life, as I said, the daily routine that comes, but it's never a routine, and you never know what's going to happen. What I do for fun now, I suppose really I'm, uh, I, I go, I do a little bit of walking, not too much, I should do more walking. Anyway, I enjoy a good uh, 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 program on the television, history program, National Geographical. I really do enjoy them, especially the history. I really am interested in history. But also I associate with my other priests and with parishioners as well. And maybe to enjoy, go out for a meal or go and visit, you know. And I enjoy company and I think they enjoy my company too, you know. Oh, absolute, supreme, humbled, I think. I can use that word, hum humbled. I think it's a, happy, it's a happy parish and that's what I try to have it. So the people come in, it's, it's their parish. No, it's not the parish, it's their parish, you know. I like people to feel welcome when they come, and the community are good and welcoming people. And I think they are happy with the community here, and they know it's supportive. Because when there's a death, or there's a, a wedding, whatever it is, or a funeral, or a wedding, or whatever, or a baptism, the community kind of is here welcoming them and joyful with them. Thank you.